here's the next problem related to the limit as a definite integral you can see the number of terms are infinite this is a series going up to infinity now if we take the general term right here you can see the numerator is r raised to the power 1 by 3 where r is going from here 1 to n and n is tending to infinity so here it is the limit n is tending to infinity and in the denominator also you can see it is n raised to the power 7 by 3 and this is again sigma this is sigma 1 upon a n plus r whole square where again r is going from 1 to infinity so let us convert this into the definite integral now if you manipulate the terms if you divide this by n raised to the power 1 by 3 and again if you take common n from here you will get n square and here we will be left with 1 upon a plus r by n whole square if you manage the terms well here we will be left with 1 by n and here also 1 by n we can have so here it is r is equal to 1 to n and here also this is 1 to n and again the limit is there n is standing to infinity now if we replace r by n is equal to x this will be integral 0 to 1 because r is going from 1 to n so 1 by n will be tending to 0 to 1 so this is x raised to the power 1 by 3 dx and again the denominator will be 1 upon a plus x whole square dx again this will be from 0 to 1 so if you calculate this value and equate to the given value that is 54 now this integral can be easily done so the value of a you will get easily and that will come out to be 8 and minus 9 so the correct option here are option number c and d so here is the problem number 6 again related to trigonometry and summation little bit of inverse is also involved but basically we have to sum up the series again the difference method a very important method as we have covered in trigonometry the sine series and cos series here it is given that summation k is equal to 0 to 1 the product of two sine terms and again here it is sine square so what we are going to do here we are going to split it up it is sine a into sine b so we will be converting this first into cos so let us first convert this into cos and you know this can be written as sigma k is equal to 0 to n it will be cos here a minus b so this will give you minus cos a plus b so this will be give you 2k plus 3 upon n plus 2 into pi and in the denominator as well this will give you 1 minus cos of twice k plus 1 upon n plus 2 into pi the sigma the summation of this quantity now if you sum this up although this is a constant one k is varying from 0 to n and here you can see the angles will be in AP and we can apply the result of the cos series in which the angles are in AP and this can also be easily done so while calculating this summation f of n will be equal to for us f of n will be equal to cos of pi upon n plus 2 now we can check easily which are the following options are correct 
n is tending to infinity, n is tending to infinity, this will become 0. So, the value will be equal to 1. So, the first option is incorrect for us. At n is equal to 4, this will be pi by 6, the value will be root 3 by 2. So, definitely the second option is correct. Again, cos inverse as f of pi. Now, f of 5, if you put f of 5, this will be pi by 7. So, this will be simply pi by 7. So, 7, 7 will cancel out. So, it will be sine of pi. This is equal to 0. So, this is also the correct option. Again, checking for the last option. f of 6, if you put here 6, it will be pi by 8. So, then simply cos inverse cos pi by 8 will give you pi by 8. So, this a will be equal to 10 pi by 8. So, it is half of 45 degree that is 22.5 degrees and you can easily calculate this value. This will be root 2 minus 1. Now, eliminating root 2 here, if you do it this way, a plus 1 is equal to root 2. If you square it out, a square plus 2a plus 1 is equal to 2. You can see a square plus 2a minus 1 is equal to 0. So, definitely D option is also the correct option. So, uh, easier one for the advance. Now, let us move on to the next problem. Now, the next problem is from the three dimensional geometry. There are three lines which are given. First line is lambda i, then second line is k plus mu j and the third line is i plus j plus nu k. Now, it is given that the point Q on L2 and the point P on L1 and the point R on L3. Now, we have to find out for which points Q on L2, these three points are collinear. Now, these three points are lying on the different line. Now, let us understand the complete problem with the figure here. So, we have a figure here for us. So, this is giving you three lines. P is lying on the first line, Q is lying on the second and R is lying on the third line. So, let us see how we can assume the points. The first line is lambda i cap. So, this point can be assumed as lambda 0, 0 and the second is on k plus mu j. So, we have here 0, mu and 1 and the third point R is on this line. So, this can be assumed as 1, 1 and nu. Now, let us see these three points are given, they are collinear. Now, we have to find out Q for which these two points that is P and R exist on line R L1 and L3. So, now you can see you know that if the points are collinear, the direction ratio of PQ line and the direction ratio of PR line will be in proportion. So, what we are going to apply here, the direction ratios of PQ line will be lambda minus 0 and PR will be definitely lambda minus 1 here, which is again equal to 0 minus mu upon 0 minus 1. And again, finally, this will be 0 minus 1 upon 0 minus nu. Now, from here, we can calculate the value of lambda mu. Now, you are not able to get all the values. Now, we have to see the possibilities. If you check from here, if you calculate the value of mu from here, let us see what we are having from here. Minus lambda is equal to minus lambda mu plus mu. So, definitely here lambda is equal to mu upon mu minus 1. And again, if you calculate this nu in terms of mu, we have this as 1 by mu. Now, trickier one, a slightly a trickier one. You can see from here, mu is not equal to 0 and mu is not equal to 1. Now, these two possibilities are ruled out. So, definitely this point Q cannot be 
0 0 1. So, we are ruling out this point. This can also not be 0 1 1. So, definitely this option is also ruled out. So, the only options which are possible for which mu is defined and also the lambda and nu are also defined are the option number third and fourth. So, C and D options are the correct options here. So, let us move to the next problem. It seems that the IIT JE advanced 2019 paper setter is in love with the matrices but again a troubling part for the students. Now, there are a lot of matrices in the next problem which are given P1 to P6 and again X is the summation of PK into a matrix again this one and the transpose of P the summation of this and again we have to go for each and every option you have to correct it. But again it was a smartly framed question if we check the first thing we can see here the transpose of P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6 is equal to P itself. That means this is a very important point to be noted here. The transpose of any P matrix is equal to P. Now, this will actually simplify the things for us again. So, the transpose of P k is same as P k. So, we can write this as P k. Now, x is the summation of this. Now, first option is the sum of the diagonal entries of x. That means, we have to find out the trace of x. So, let us see how to get the trace of x. Now, we have this is the summation here the trace of x is equal to what? Now, let us check it out. Now, this matrix is also given and let us say this matrix is equal to a Q matrix and again if you notice the transpose of Q is again equal to Q. Now, let us check it here what other values we are getting in this option. The first option the sum of the diagonal entries. So, definitely we have to find out the trace. Now, the trace of this x is equal to that is what we have to find the first option. So, the trace of here is equal to actually the summation of all these matrices. So, we can find out in Drizzly the trace of each and every matrix here. So, this is equal to in fact let us have some space here. So, trace of x here is equal to summation trace of P q and P transpose. Now, you know a very important property of trace that is trace of a b is equal to trace of b a. This is all we know. So, from here this will be equal to trace of here we have if we take here this as one matrix. So, this is Q into P transpose into P. Now, if you check for every P matrix here, P transpose into P will be equal to identity matrix. All the P matrices which are given here are orthogonal matrices. So, this is equal to I. Now, this is going to decomplicate the things. So, this is in fact trace of Q and this is going from 0 to say we have this K is going from 1 to 6. So, this K is going from 1 to 6. So, this will be 6 times trace of Q. So, if you calculate the trace of Q here which is given to us this is a Q, it is 2, 0, 1. So, this is equal to 3. So, definitely the trace of Q is definitely 3. So, this is 6 into 3 that is equal to 18. So, we have here the first option. What is given here the first option? That is the sum of diagonal element of X is equal to 18. So, the first option here is the correct one. So, here we are moving to the second option. 
Uh, going for the second option, it is x into 1, 1, 1 equal to alpha times 1, 1, 1. So, let us treat this matrix, a uh, column matrix as R matrix. So, we have x into R is equal to alpha times R. So, let us see here. Now, we know what is x here. So, this will be summation k from 1 to say this is 1 to 6 and x is as we know it is p k q into p k transpose. Now, this is getting multiplied with r. If you multiply these two, you will again get r. So, this can be written as r. So, this is again p k q into r summation again from k is equal to 1 to 6. Again, if you multiply these two, you will get here, if you multiply these two, you will get here 6, 3, 6. Now, here this is a constant one. So, definitely the summation all the p which are given here will be 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. This can be added up very easily. So, this is 6, 3, 6. So, now here finally, if you calculate the value. So, let us see the value what we are getting here. This will be now this into 6. So, this is 12 uh, plus uh, again 6 plus 12. So, this is 30 and this is also 30 and this is also 30. So, this is 30 times 1, 1, 1. So, this is what we have. So, alpha is equal to 30 for us. So, we can check here the option number 2 is definitely the correct option. You can easily check the third one as well. X is a symmetric matrix. Yes, definitely X is a symmetric matrix. Now, due to this fact that P transpose is equal to P and Q transpose is equal to again Q. So, you can check X is a symmetric matrix. Now, coming to the last one, X minus 30 into identity matrix is an invertible matrix. So, let us check it out how we can go for it. Now, from the last option, we have seen that x r is equal to 30 times r. If you bring out here x r minus 30 r is equal to a null matrix. Now, taking r common from here, we have 30 into identity matrix x minus 30 into identity into r is equal to null matrix. If you take the determinant on both the sides, it will be determinant of this into determinant of r which is equal to 0. Now, this is not 0. So, definitely determinant of x minus 30 i is equal to 0. That implies that x minus 30 is not an invertible matrix. So, the fourth option which is given here that x minus 30 identity matrix is an invertible matrix is an incorrect option. So, the correct options here are A, B and C.